What up, B-Squad? It is your boy, JB, and I am here today with a brand new review for Bell Collective, you guys, Season 3, Episode 3. The episode is titled Lying and Spying. Now, before we go ahead and get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other on the channel, and you guys aren't subscribed yet, do me a solid favor, you guys, and stop taking me out in this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. You guys know the routine. You can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning your post notifications on, and sharing the video. And with that out of the way, without further ado, let's talk about Bell Collective, shall we? All right, you guys, so this episode, we picked up where we last left off with Latrice and Soguchi talking to each other, going outside, right? And I tweeted this last night, and it's so funny that Soguchi, she, she, she saw my tweet and quote retweeted me laughing at it, right? Because I tweeted that I like all of them. I like every lady on this show, right? I may shade, I may shade them here or there, right? But I like all of them respectively. But my issue when it comes to the bells is that the bells will beat a dead horse with a stick. And if you guys go to my Twitter, my Twitter is underscore JB says what with a Z. I got a tweet of a man of a of a person just beating us beating a horse, like literally just beating it. Because that's what it is with the ladies' issues. They just, they just, just, it just never ends. You feel like, okay, we've moved on from this, but then, nope, we're going to bring it back up. Because even last night on social media, Latrice and Marie were subtweeting each other. Literally subtweeting the hell out of each other. I was like, oh my God, why? So, when it comes to Soguji and Latrice, I understand both sides of this story. I understand both sides. I understand so Gucci's side. We supposed to be friends. I was showing you I was showing you some businesses, some property, and you went and did business with someone else, right? I don't have an issue with how so Gucci feels. I don't think she should take it so personally is the thing that I feel when it comes to so Gucci. Why are you taking it so personally? Was Latrice wrong and not saying, hey girl, so I'm you know, weighing my, I'm weighing my options. I'm looking at other, you know, other realtors to see what they can do. But I also do want to do business with you. But I'm just letting you know that I got other, I'm looking at, I'm weighing all my, all my options, right? And then when it comes down to it, be like, hey, Gucci. So I decided to go with such and such to, you know, go with such and such. It could have been done that way, right? So, and the thing is, I just don't understand why so Gucci is taking it so personally. It's business. It's business. It's not like she personally is she even I mean, she came to you to help for help. So to take it so personally, I don't get it right. But they going to move forward. Right. And Latrice also told so Gucci how she felt when she showed up to her, her um, you know, her boot camp. Right. How you shaded me. But Marie was late and you didn't give Marie the same flack that you gave to me. It was because her feelings were hurt. Like, let's be real, Latrice. That's what it was. So, next up, we see Aikisha Ikea. So, Aikisha Ikea is going down to guidance lens because Josh does her makeup, right? And, you know, she caught him up with what's going on with Ferris Street, and I'm fine with that. But that's where the buck stops. Because I had an issue with Josh sitting here telling Aikisha Ikea all of Latrice's business. I was like, now that is just plum tacky as hell. I'm not going to do that to nobody that I know. Like, I don't go around telling my friends. I don't go around telling my friends business. Like, that's just tacky. That's tacky as hell. That's tacky and it's messy. And I did not like it. That's why I've been saying that Latrice needs to have some boundaries set in place when it comes to Josh. Do I feel like maybe Latrice put, may have put Josh in the middle of her situation with Cliff? Quite possibly. But it wasn't for Josh to go back and spread her business. I just did not like that, and I didn't think that that was cool at all. But let me know what you guys thought about it, and we're going to pause here, and we're going to move forward. All right, you guys, so next up, we see Latrice. So Latrice went down to Latisha's office. I'm going to ask you one more time. What is the Enterprises? Like, what does she, now you guys remember i told you guys before i didn't finish all of season two so i don't know what's under leticia pearson enterprise i know the brunches but what else does she have under the enterprise i just wondered i just wondered that because again leticia i don't want my good sis 
to be like Jen Shaw and I don't want her to be like, um, you know, the Chrisleys. I want my good sis to be free of shackles and chains, right? Another thing, Latrice, I mean not Latrice, but Leticia. This confessional wig. I've tried to play like I don't see it. I've really tried to ignore this confessional wig. It's so fascinating that last season, Leticia's wig game came up, but this season, it's gone back down to hell because you can literally see the lace. Like you can see the lace right around here. Especially in that interview, you can see the lace right there and you can see the lace in the part. Then in this scene, you can literally see the lace. Like you can literally see where the lace was. I was like, oh, can we stop putting our hair, this lace and installing the laces ourselves? Cause I could literally see it. But Letitia, Latrice went to Letitia because she has a speaking engagement that she's going to be doing. So she wants to get some help from her, you know, from Letitia, right? And Letitia helped her. So then, you know, they talked about their husbands and, you know, Latrice asked Letitia, so why haven't you moved out? And she said she's, she has a fear of Glenn not letting her move on. And I'm like, oh, Letitia, that speaks volumes right there. If you have fear that your husband who ain't been treating you well, won't let you go, you might want to, like you and Latrice might be in a similar situation. Y'all husbands might, might, might be from two different generations, but y'all husbands are Southern men who were probably raised with a certain ideal about how women should be in the marriage, what women should take in the marriage. And I just don't agree with that. But hey, that, you know, I'm not someone who's going to sit here and say, oh, you need to leave your husband. That goes for both Letitia and Latrice. Can I segue just real, real quickly, you guys, when it comes to Latrice? I like Latrice. I think she's a beautiful girl. But um, I saw an interview. I think she did. A, I think she and Cliff did an interview with Rolling Out, giving marital advice. No shade to you, Latrice. I like you a lot, right? I would. That's taking marital advice from you would be equivalent to me asking a blind person, "How does my outfit look?" <laughs> they can't give me no good advice because they can't see what I got on. And for Latrice, you can't give anybody marital advice because I don't think that you are really dealing with the issues that you have within your marriage. I feel like with, Lat with Latrice, I feel like it's like a gunshot wound. You just putting a bandaid over just hoping that the bleeding will stop or, you know, just taking a rug and sweeping all the dirt up under the rug. That's what I get when it comes to Latrice. So, yeah, Latrice, I'm so sorry, sis, but I just wouldn't take it. No marital advice from you. No shade. But yeah, let's pause here and move forward. Next up, you guys, Tambra and her hair and her voice. First of all, Tambra, this interview look with you. The hair is pretty, but the hair is doing way too much. The hair is doing way too much. Number one is too many bundles. Number two, you got part of, you got some of your hair down over here, but then you got this big bun up here. And I was just like, what hairstyle was she going for? Is it a wig? I, I'm praying that that ain't no wig. Uh, whatever it is, first first thing we're going to do is we're going to just loosen, you know, loosen up a few of them bundles. Like, let's just take out a few bundles at a time, right? Then we're going to pick a hairstyle. Like, we're going to stick with one style. Either we're going to have it all up or we're going to have it all down, not this up here is down, but this up here is in an updo. No. So Tambra and her hair are meeting with Marie, right? And Tambra and her hair. Again, like I said, I like all the ladies, but I have no problem with saying how I really feel when it comes to the ladies. So Tambra and her hair is talking about, well, not Tambra and her hair, but Marie is talking to Tambra and her hair about how the ladies feel that she is not someone who tells the truth and let's keep it a book. Timber and her hair did lie in last week's episode and, and she was definitely caught in that lie. So Timber and her hair says that, you know, none of her friends call her a liar. They may not call you a liar to your face. They may want to keep the peace. Then, you know, she's talking about, you know, how she has to build a, a relationship with her viewers. I was like, oh, Jesus, anybody in Jackson who listens, I don't know how anybody could listen to that radio show with her because that radio voice is hella fucking annoying. 
I really wish that she would talk in her normal octave because that, that high pitched frequency, it's a hell to the nod for me, right? So then at one point, Marie brought up, asked her, has she been, has she ever, has she ever been in a long-term relationship? She said all her relationships were, were long-term. So some guy had texted Marie and I'm thinking to myself, Marie, why does this matter to you? Like, what does it got to do with you? So she talked about, the, she's been in, she's been proposed to twice, right? But she hasn't been engaged. I was like, okay, I get what she's saying. She's saying that they proposed to her, but she didn't accept the pr proposal. Don't really give a damn, right? So that's that. Then we see Aikisha Ikea. So Aikisha Ikea went out with Latrice. Now, Aikisha Ikea, you being shaded towards um, Latrice about being a grandmother and having grandkids... Um, so most people will probably look at Latrice with her kid, with her grandkids and think those are her actual kids, right? Whereas no shade to you because my mother was a woman of a certain age, right? When I was born, now I, I wasn't my mom's biological son, but when my, I was born, my mom was 49 years old, I believe. Almost, she was almost 50. My mom was like 48, 49 years old, right? When I was born. So people always thought that I was my mom. Now, granted, my mom didn't look like an older woman at the time. You know, she, she, she didn't look like a woman that was like significantly older. But looking at me and my mom, people did sometimes actually as I got older, when I started, you know, got like into, into middle school and high school and stuff. That's when people started thinking, oh, that's your grandmother. Nope, that's my mom. Right. So. Yeah, so I say this not to be shady or anything of that nature, but ma'am, your kids, when you start taking it, when you take your kids to school, I hate to say it, but people are going to think that those are your grandchildren and not your kids. So you sitting over here shading Latrice about being a grandmother. And again, those kids look like they could, you know, people could probably think that those are her kids, but I just don't understand the unnecessary shade at times, right? So, Latrice is talking about how she's contemplating having kids with Cliff. Please don't. Kids don't fix, you know, issues in your relationship. That's why I say please don't. Because mm -hmm. kids don't fix, you know, things that are, in, that are already fucked up in a relationship. So, then Aikisha Ikea, she decided to ask Latrice the questions that Josh brought up to her. And... I would have felt the way if I was would I would have, I really would have felt the way if I were Latrice and I think she did feel the way because that ain't got nothing to do with you and the fact that Josh even felt the need to bring it up to you it was tacky to, and, and classless if we want to be real but I, I like how you know Latrice handled it but that's it you guys let's pause here and wrap up the episode so Tambor and her hair Tambor and her hair. Once again, Tamber and her hair, can we just loosen up the bump? Can we take out two or three bundles of hair? Because it's a lot of goddamn hair. So I will say with Tamber and her hair, I am glad that Tamber and her hair has lost that ugly shade of pink lipstick that should be discontinued. So the scene with her and Damon, they're having dinner with each other. And I was just sitting there thinking to myself, this scene seems like it's very forced. I just don't believe that Timber and her hair and Demond are in a, a real relationship with each other, right? I just don't see it. There's no chemistry there. There's nothing between those two. So she's telling Demond how, you know, her producer or manager, Quasi, wants her to do a podcast, right? And I'm like, okay, so he's wondering if there if that means less time with that he gets to spend with her. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it probably does. If she if she does the radio show during the day, during the midday, then when do you think she's going to do the podcast? I'm pretty sure she's not going to go right from, unless she goes right from the midday show to her podcast. Yes, sir. You ain't getting a lot of time with her, right? That's all I got. So the next scene, the, uh, the last scene of the episode was, I was kind of confused when they were talking about the fact that Marie is going to be renting the condo to Letitia. I was like, huh? I was kind of confused, but I, I kind of understood it, but I kind of didn't. The thing that was confusing to me was, why was so Gucci sitting on that desk? I was like, girl, why are you sitting on this desk? It, it's, 
is given. I didn't know where to be when the scene started. So let me just sit my ass on this damn desk. So they sat down, they were talking and Glenn came up, right? Now, when Marie, oh my, when Marie hopped up, I was like, girl, what's going on? The way you, the way she hopped up, you would have think Glenn came up there with a, a, a gun in his hand, ready to just blast a, a flat jammy on all their asses, right? What? Marie, I think you should have stayed out of that one, girl, because Glenn went in on you. Like, I mean, he really went in on you. Was it disrespectful? Absolutely. But damn, I think you should have just kind of shushed and minded your business. Let that man deal with his wife. Let that man deal with his wife. I don't like how I said that. Let that man talk to his wife. I don't like how I said deal with his wife because it came. I know when I said it, I thought about it. But yeah. So he went off on her. And the thing is, when it comes to Glenn, you know, Leticia was talking about how he has abandonment issues. That ain't got nothing to do with you, ma'am. I know that there's your husband, but <clears throat> if your husband can't treat you the way that you should be treated, then you got to do what you got to do for you and your son. It don't benefit you or your son or even him to stay in a marriage that is in shambles, in disarray. It's not good for you. It's not good for your son. Like, don't stay in a relationship for the kids or for someone else. If you're unhappy, if you're not being treated the way you should be treated, then you got to do what's best for you and only you. And if that means leaving him, do it. Like, I don't see no issues with it. But that was the episode, you guys. It wasn't a whole lot to it. But let me know what you guys thought about it down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your post notifications. Share the video, you guys. And with that out of the way, without further ado, nope, I did that all backwards with subscribe to the channel you guys take care of yourselves um, wash your hands be blessed and i'll catch you guys in the next one you guys until then bye guys